hi everybody and thanks for coming along to this week's workshop how to improve relationships i'd like to make a big welcome to simon poppleton who is not only a very valued member of our community but is also a professional counsellor and she has a heart for connection coaching um, she specialises in guiding individuals and couples in wholehearted living and loving. Simone's private practice, Rooted in Love, is in the leafy suburbs of Four Ways in Johannesburg, but she also practices online and consults online. So uh, I'll tell you at the end how you can contact her. Welcome, Simone. It's so brilliant to have you here. Thank you for coming. Um Hello everyone, it's really, really lovely to be here with you and I really have enjoyed this platform so much. I look forward to it weekly and seeing all of your faces and getting to know you a bit better each week. So I'm really, really excited to have an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about me and the work that I do. Um, it's very much my heart's work. I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, so to be able to speak about it um, is always very exciting and I love I love opportunities like this. So I hope that it's something that encourages you and that you can take a lot of information from. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I just hope that it's a really um, enjoyable space for you. So I thought that um, we could include a little bit of an activity today. Um, I'm going to work this like a workshop where I will teach you some key concepts. Um, I've got a bit of a theme for our session today. And then I'll give you opportunities to write down your answers to some of the questions that I have. You're welcome to engage with the questions you know, in the moment. But if you think that you're going to need a bit more time to maybe answer them, then feel free to write down the question and do it a little bit later as well. I just want you to feel free in this space. And then if you have questions, um, I'm very happy to answer all of those afterwards as well. So just to kind of start you off, um, so my husband and I have been married for a year and a half now and we've been together for 11 years, so we were high school sweethearts. Um, so when I think about our uh, very start of our marriage, we came back from um, a Caribbean honeymoon. It was very exciting. We moved in together for the very first time. Um, even after being together for 11 years, obviously this was when you know, we were going to play house now, uh, you know, after we got married. And I moved in with, not exaggerating, 80 boxes, that's eight zero, from my family home <laughs> into into our one bedroom apartment oh. and that was really just tells you a little bit about how what i do in our marriage i take up space i take up time um and so i moved everything in and um so three weeks after we got married i'm now sitting in the middle of all of these boxes crying i'm feeling so defeated drew is so upset because there's just not enough space for everything in this apartment he ends up leaving in a half because he's upset um and that's and that was like our welcome back from honeymoon so i don't recommend moving everything in after the honeymoon you need the honeymoon after the moving <laughs> but um anyway it just made me think a lot about how building a home together you know and actually making a home is very much like actually making a successful relationship and so that's what i wanted to speak to you about today so one of my favorite bible verses that i wanted to share with you is from proverbs 24 3 4 and it says by wisdom a house is built and through understanding it is established through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Can you repeat that then text is Proverbs 16? Sure, Proverbs 24, 3 to 4. 24. Thank three you. To, yeah, Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4. Thank you. Sure. And so what that meant to me was that our home needed to be built on wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and therefore so does any relationship or marriage. Um, I will try and interchange between relationship and marriage for those that are not married. Um, but for those that I don't necessarily know all of your marital statuses, but I also want you to think about this as either a relationship between you and God or even a relationship with yourself if you want to use this as an introspective time. So I try to make this as applicable to everyone as possible. So in keeping with our little theme of a house, I thought that we could start with our little activity and then kind of describe what each part of a house actually represents in terms of a relationship. 
So I've got two pieces of paper with me. I hope that you do too. And I'm going to ask you to take your first piece of paper and we're going to make it into a square. So we're going to need to actually cut it into a square. So the best way to do that is to take your A4 and to, I'm going to try to show this as best as possible. Essentially, you're going to do this and you're going to cut this section off and then you'll be left with a square. Okay? So don't worry too much about that line. That's just so that you're able to make a square. I'm just going to cut mine and you can do that for both pieces of paper. So that's how it'll look. Like blue pizza. So you won't know what blue pizza is, will you? <laughs> um, this, this program when we were kids, and uh, it was the best program ever. Yeah. Uh, and it used, to, and every week they used to make something, maybe out of a bar, so maybe out of paper and. Plastic and they used to back plastic. They never used to have sellotape, they always used to call it sticky tape. They weren't oh, any plastic. <laughs> okay, so you should have two like this. And um, you can just put the one down and we're gonna start with the first one. So what you're gonna do for me is don't worry too much about this line, that's just really an extra. So we're gonna fold the piece of paper so it's trying to make it as even as possible. So before you kind of squash it down, just see if this one fits equally there. So it should look like that. And when it feels equal, then just squash it down. So you should have something like this. And when you've got your column, you're going to take the one starting at both ends, so the first end, and you're going to fold it in like that. And you're going to do it for the other side as well. So it will look, it'll have that little cross there, if you can see that. And the same thing on the other side. So you're going to fold this side in. That. And the other side. That. So it should essentially have two clusters on this paper. You're going to fold the one side in. Are you still all okay? When you fold it, it needs to be folded against the thicker side, not the thinner side. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that when you open it, it, it should look like that. You should be able to do that. Is that okay? Yeah. And yeah. then when you open it, almost like a boat, you're going to take this line that you, you should have on each corner. I don't know if you can see there. there's that line that you did originally. And you're going to fold that in. So it will look like that on the one side now. And then the other side will be the same. We're now going to move to the other piece of paper. You can put that down for a sec. The other piece of paper is the same shape and you're going to start the same way as the other one where you're going to fold it into that, those columns. So again, just trying to make them equal on both sides.
right? So it's the same as before, almost like a little door. And then you're gonna do the same thing with both ends where you're gonna be folding in like this. And again, you're gonna fold in the other side like this. So the same side, both ways. And the same side, both ways. So we've got to so make that cross again. Isn't it? You've got to make that cross again, exactly. Just like that. And then when you open it, it should look something like this. So you've got the cross, cross, cross. So those six. Okay. And then when you open it on this side, so um, these here are your crosses on this yeah. side of the paper and on this side of the paper, you're going to fold it in. So not the side of the crosses, the other side. And you're going to fold just a little bit. So it's going to look something like that. So you see it's a very small flap. And the same on the other side. So the opposite side. Can we just pause for one second? <laughs> Where are we up to? I've done the crosses. Who was, uh, I can't see you speaking. Cassie. Um, Cassie. Yeah, so we're just folding down the flap, the top of the crosses on the side. Of Not the where the crosses are, the other side. Okay. Yeah. So here are my crosses and here are my folds. That's what it should look like. Okay. And here are my crosses, crosses, fold, fold. And now this might be a little tricky. So we're gonna just do it the best we can. The middle square of each, so this one and this one here, you can see it's quite big. It actually comes up to this point here that makes the square. You're going to fold along that main line and you'll see this is the main line there. You're gonna kind of fold that in a little bit. So it should look a bit like that. This side needs to be able to come here because what we're going to be doing is lifting it. I just can't imagine how well we're going to do at this. <laughs> so it might look something like this. So this, uh, the, that fold that I saved is at the back and this piece basically came down. So it's, and your little, your little flappies at the top. See if you can manage that. So the middle piece was folded yeah and actually quite naturally this piece will kind of come forward so it, it you'll see the way it kind of wants to come up and the other side you're going to need to do the side here needs to also come up and the best way is to almost just you see what i'm doing here like i'm matching it up So the other side, so it was like this. And then the other side, this one, kind of just, again, the flap needs to be at the top. So I'm left at the back with this tiny little triangle, actually. But you might be left with a different shape. That's not what's important. The important thing is that you get something that looks like this. <laughs> you might get to it in a different way, Drew and I have both done it and got to it differently. So, <laughs> but the way mine goes is I have this little flap at the back and I have my little, there we go, well done. And this little fold, you can actually fold up. I just sticky tape mine down. You can glue yours down. It's no problem. And you're going to do the same on the other side. So... <laughs> So the other side is like a little square. Here, in the same way, I'm folding my middle, folding it up. And 
and I'm left with this little triangle at the back. And that's what it will look like. I'm going to just sellotape my triangles at the back so that it stays closed. But you can glue it if you don't have sellotape. So do you have something like this? It's making me laugh a lot. That is so cute. Look how tiny. Yours is lovely. <laughs> I'm all wibbly wobbly. Well done. All the ones I'm seeing are really good. Well done, Shelly. That's perfect. That's really good. Thank you. <laughs> hilarious. Basically, just sellotape the whole thing. <laughs> sellotape's the trick. Just put it on. And then you have your little, your little roof. Goes on top. Well done. So it will look a little, little something like that. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> we built a house. <laughs> it's a little house, exactly. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Brilliant. what you're welcome to do, and this will be your preference, is in I, I'm a very visual person, so it's really helpful for me if I have something visual to work with as a reminder of the concepts we're going to work through today. So you're welcome to actually undo your house and use this to write some of the reflection questions on, if that will be a good trigger for you. Otherwise, if you want to keep your little house intact, you're welcome to write on another one. Hey. And now you can decorate it and you can make it your home and make it represent the relationship you want. So. <laughs> Um, Mine's a bit crooked. Um, sorry. <laughs> Mine's crooked already. <laughs> it's a good job I don't have a relationship. <laughs> so where does it all start? Our first step, do you remember, was actually setting the foundation. And that was something really important is we had to cut it to size and we had to make it workable for what we needed. And that represents a lot about what our relationships are like. So I'm just gonna go back up here a little bit. So in the Bible verse I originally shared with you, um, we heard that a relationship is based on wisdom. We said that um, obviously we need knowledge and we need understanding as well. So wisdom was really interesting for me because it is an attribute that is associated actually with God. So he sees the big picture. He is, you know, nothing is a surprise to him. He's infinitely wise. Um, and I thought it was really important that although I'm saying how we can build our relationships, actually he is the true builder and he gives us the tools. And so that's a really important part of any foundation for a successful relationship that we're going to talk about today. So what I'd like you to write down um, is to think about some spiritual activities or disciplines that either individually or as a couple that you can incorporate, either you're doing them already or you'd like to incorporate to base your relationship on the rock. Because obviously then it can brave any storms that our lives face, including our storms of selfishness, our storms of self-seeking behaviors and all the other things that show up in our relationships. So either write down that question if you wanna do it later or if you wanna take a few moments, what are some spiritual activities? that you can incorporate a bit more individually and as a couple. Guys, can I just, whilst you're just pausing and thinking of that, say that for some reason, and I have no idea why at the moment, um, Zoom has decided that they're throwing us off in a few minutes. So when we go off, if we just Ooh. stay back on. Okay.
in the next part of when we were working on our little house, remember I started off by folding the papers and that was because it offered support in terms of where to draw the lines, where to fold it, where to, you know, kind of pull it in. And so the second feature of building a house is that you need the framing of the house and the frame is what provides the support. And in the same way in a relationship, the way that we offer support to get support is by having a really solid friendship, a good friendship in our relationships and our marriages. So friendship is actually the part where our companionship lives, our playfulness, our good humor, our fun, or our joyfulness. And that's what spans the years when other things change, like things you like to do or your preferences or your hobbies or even your looks. So I've known Drew, as I said, for 11 years, and I still think he's the funniest person. <laughs> so what I love about the idea of framing is that it's not just about loving in a relationship, but it's also about liking them. We don't have to like everything about our, the person in our life, but there are a lot of things to like about them and enjoy about them. And so I think that especially during this time when it has been a bit more stressful and a little bit more anxiety in our relationships or in our homes, it's really important that we don't just tell our partner what we need more of and what they're not doing and you know, focus on the negatives. So I'd like you to write down one to five things that you would love to give your partner a high five for today. So the reason that it's one to five is that it's um, believed that for every negative that we give in our relationships, we should give five positives in its place. I high five my partner every single day because he makes me laugh every single day. I will live a thousand years because of that. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. I love it. Oh, married, how lovely is that? <laughs> I love that. I think this is a very important thing to have fun and laugh every day. Just a little bit yeah. at least. We find everyday time for that, so. That's beautiful. That's so important, that encouragement. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? I had fun every day in my marriage, when he, while he was alive, and even <coughs> right up the day he died, he was still larking around. Was <laughs> it? Wow. Consciousness. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, it was so bad that when he was sort of almost taking his last breath, my daughter was with me and I just said to her, you know what he's going to do? He's going to stop breathing. And then he, after a little while, he's going to take one big one just to make me jump. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't laugh about things like that, but you know, we do now. <laughs> because it was just him. Yeah, it was just him. That's very sweet. That's sweet. It's a little legacy that he's left you with of him. So that's sweet. Yeah, we still laugh all the time about him, about the things he used to say. So, oh, even when I'm watching things on the telly and I'll think, oh, yes, he'd have made a joke about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> still there after all these years. So you, you're, you're, you're like, you've still got him. He's telling you the jokes and he's not here anymore. That's brilliant. Exactly. Yeah, you don't lose him. He's still there. <laughs> still in my spirit. Part of that's me. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Anne. So our next part, so once we've got the framing of a house and as we continue to build, we then need to, and obviously we couldn't depict that in this, but <laughs> imagine inside here, there is plumbing and there's the mechanicals and electricals and all the wiring that takes place to make the house actually run. Otherwise, it's just a structure, right? And so there are things that make our relationships run. And what are essentially are our relationships running on at the moment? So like a house, we are also very much wired for love and connection. There's something called BIDS for connection, B-I-D-S. And this is when we essentially are subtly and in not so subtle ways asking our partner for attention, affection, affirmation, some kind of connection. And the important thing is to accept these bits more than we reject these bits. So to turn toward the bits rather than turning away from them. And sometimes we do it so unintentionally 
So my encouragement to you is be a little bit more intentional or aware of the ways in which you ask, you make bids, and the way that your partner makes bids because you probably do it in different ways. So something simple might be that my husband will come in because we're working in two different spaces and during a break, he'll come in and he will either give me a squeeze or he'll be playful, a little smack on the bum, something like that. Um, it'll be some kind of affection. And if I miss that moment, then I can shrug it off. I can say I'm a bit busy or I can keep looking at my phone or keep writing, whatever I was doing. And I have missed a moment for him to connect with me. But if I turn toward him, I might, you know, give him a smile back, give him a cuddle back. I might um, ask him how he's doing, how he's coming along with the work we spoke about earlier. So it's just about being a bit more aware of the bids our partners make. I might say something like, oh, I spoke to a friend today and I'll leave it open. And that's maybe a way for me to say, kind of want him to be curious. Oh, what did she say? Well, what, what was that like? You know, how is she? And if he kind of goes, mm, okay then I know that I feel like he's been disinterested. He's not as engaged. But if he says, oh, well, what did she say? How did you find her? You know, what's news? Then I feel like he's interested in me. And so we do those things very subtly. I find especially with men, they do it in very, very subtle ways. Like, oh, look at something I'm watching. Or look at this video that I saw. And it's very easy to shrug it off as something like, I don't really like that. Or I'm not enjoying that. Um, my husband's become obsessed with this flower program called Flower Fight. I think it's a British program. And then they have to create these flower structures. <laughs> and I don't know why he enjoys it so much. But if I kind of just shrug it off, I miss a moment for connection. So connection is not a spotlight moment. Connection is actually a twinkle light moment. On its own, it's not a big deal. You know, you miss one bid, it's not a big deal. But when you turn towards lots of little bits in your relationship, twinkle lights, fairy lights make something beautiful and bright. And that's what we should be aiming for. So what I'd like you to think about, and you can maybe be more curious about this, you know, into the rest of the evening, whether or not you've perhaps made some bits recently, your partner's made some bits, in what way do you think you do it more typically? Um, is it more fiction based? You know, think about your love languages um, and then think about how you could respond to them, turn toward them a little bit better next time. Right, then inside our house, so once we've got all the electrical, we've got all the wiring happening, it keeps the sparks alive, we need to essentially keep the warmth inside our homes you know um, South African homes are not built for weather like we've had at the moment but in the UK they are and so there's a lot of insulation and in our relationships we need the things that bolster up that warmth in our relationship so there's something called the five 30 minute segments and what that means is that in a week you need at least five 30 good minutes together if you can manage that in a week, you're going to maintain that warmth and coziness in your relationship. So what are some simple ways that you can have these moments? So the first thing is the way that you part when you leave or go your separate ways. A kiss, a hug, an acknowledgement. Put down whatever you were doing and saying goodbye. There's something called the six second kiss which is a really important one where you kiss for at least six seconds to get all of those kind of good feelings buzzing another way that you can do that is in the way that you reunite so it's very easy especially if there's children in the home when you or your partner comes back home um, from time apart and you're busy you're cooking you're making you work and you're doing something and it's a distracted hello but if you can just take that moment to greet kind of intentionally. Another way is through admiration and appreciation. It's so beautiful if you can at least give each other two appreciations a day. Something simple, thank you for remembering this, or thank you for taking that out, or um, I appreciate you for. Another way is affection, a really easy way, just a touch or some kind of um, bodily contact. Um, it really helps to decrease anxiety, which is so useful during this time as well. 
And lastly, some kind of weekly date is also a really great way to have those um, five 30 minute segments. Um, and that's, you know, you can obviously do that even just as a coffee in the morning or something a bit more elaborate. So I'd like you to think of five things that take only five minutes to do together. And write those down as ways in which you can connect with one another. Would anybody like to share with us an idea to kind of trigger somebody else's idea? Yeah, I've got one. My husband absolutely adores our garden and he just loves being outside. So just to spend half an hour walking around the garden with him and letting him tell me about what he's found in the garden because he's like interested in insects and birds and you know, kind of what he's, what work he's done and what he's planning to do. I think he'll love that. Love that. That's beautiful. Anybody else like to share? Sorry. Uh, I'm married second time, very freshly, but I've learned a lot of things from first marriage. And uh, although it was good, it lasts like 14 years and we got divorced like friends it's, uh, just our lives when it's, that's another story, but it's okay. It's, it was a happy divorce actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are still friends and um, uh, we've learned a lot and we sit, sat together after we divorced and we really went through a lesson learned and he's happily married now and I'm happily married and Everything is fine. We are all friends, and um, but I must say that I've learned from my first marriage exactly that that we spent we didn't spend enough time together. Especially we had we both had a um, a job that we traveled a lot, and we sometimes we would just come after one or two weeks not seeing each other and just continue with our lives. Not, not. so. What I implemented in this marriage, and thankfully I have a partner who really thinks very similar like me about uh, relationship, and I guess we're together. That's one of the reasons. <laughs> but um, is that we spend every single day at least half an hour together. Usually it's more than that. We don't count this um, quarantine time. We spend a lot of time together. <laughs> but I think is also very important that we both have something that we don't do together that I have my own part that I'm doing for myself and he has his own my, my passion are dogs and his passions are racing cars so this is something that we only sometimes spend together but actually we do it separately and I think this is also very important part, uh, at least for us. But uh, everyday appreciation, like, I think it's so easy and nice to say thank you for the things that we think that are just normals for taking trash out. We always yeah. say thank you uh, for little things, so small things. And we always try to spend time together um, every day. Please. 30 minutes that's wonderful sorry thank you for sharing it i love that and it is so important because we are still two individuals um and we're connected and we we constantly navigate in that sometimes if we're too too much like two individuals we become like roommates and if we're too connected we're like one person and and that's unhealthy so it's so good to have the balance but when you are together it's meaningful so that's lovely mm -hmm. Karen, you and Stuart used to have that couch time, didn't you? Yeah, so we used to, the first um, 15 minutes or so when we came in from work or when Stuart came in from work, especially when the children were small, was couch time. And they knew, Jana, do you remember this? Yeah, we also Sorry. had couch time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, growing kids God's way. 
Um, and it was just about sharing, um, sharing your day with each other. And the children knew that as soon as we sat down, okay, we're having couch time, mummy and daddy having couch time, they knew, leave us alone for those 15 minutes so that we have the opportunity to, to connect. And I think that helps the children as well because mm -hmm. they, they get their stability from seeing that the parents are, are connected and stable. Mm -hmm. And so by us demonstrating that to them, um, I think that's also quite powerful. So it was good for us and it was good for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's awesome. And, and that, you know, as, as children, our parents are our first model of a relationship. And it's actually understood that the relationship between a couple doesn't exist in each of us, but actually in the space between us. So what do I put into the space? What do you put into the space? And children kind of play in that space. It's called their playground because they are playing in that. So whatever you're putting in, if you're polluting it with harshness and unkindness and, and you know, not enough time, that's what they're living in. But if it, there is this connection and softness, they're growing up in that space. And that really leads us into the next part of building a house, and that's the actual walls. So once we have the, the structure, the framing, we've got the insulation, we've got all of that wiring, we need to actually have the walls. And the walls represent um, a few things. It's the two things that I'm going to touch on tonight is the first thing is that they represent boundaries. So around our house, we have boundaries and that's really good to solidify you as a couple. So there is a gate where you get to decide as a couple who visits, when do they visit and how often will they visit? How much interference or involvement will we have by others? So the outside walls are to keep in and out others. And then you have the internal walls of your relationship or your marriage. And these walls inside the home are also really important. They, they have doors, which means you can open and close them, but we still need to have boundaries in our relationship and decide what those are. Something really important about um, that I've just spoken about in terms of polluting that relational space is something called stonewalling. And I want you to just think of this idea of a wall. We always respond in different ways in times of conflict. But for many of us in our relationship, either us or our partner does something called stonewalling. And that's where it feels like you're talking to a wall. So they shut down, they close off, they emotionally are no longer with you. When that happens, if you are the partner that does that in the relationship as a defense mechanism, or maybe your partner does that, it's best that you stop the conversation at that point because it's not going to go anywhere. And you need to go into some kind of self-soothing behavior. If it's your partner that does this, maybe that would be a really good way to ask them what are some of the ways they can self-soothe. So what I'd like you to think about, self-soothing is a way to calm yourself. It could include breathing. It could include going for a walk, listening to music, journaling. It could even include kind of hugging yourself, taking a bath. So just thinking about those ways of self-soothing in those moments and then re-engaging in the conversation. I think it would be helpful for all of us. We all need self-soothing behaviors at some point in our relationship to bring down the energy. Just take some time to write down or think about what are some things that work for you? We have uh, some kind of rule, I'm talking all the time, but <laughs> we have some kind of rule when, when some of us is upset, we literally say like, hey, I'm, uh, this really upset me. Uh, and, and the other always say like, okay, uh, we'll talk about this later. And, and we just leave it. Yeah. And when I, the, the person that is upset is ready, we trust each other that we will come back and say like, okay, we can talk about this and that we don't forget. We never forget that we talk not one against each other, but looking toward solution. Like, I feel like this, blah, 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 da, 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 not like you, 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 you. And yeah. it's very hard. And I think it takes time to learn. Um, for me, 
takes years to learn, but I brought this lesson here in this new relationship and it works really, really great. Absolutely. Yep. That's so we important. When you... Sorry. Sorry, just on that point, uh, we used to have a cushion and if we had a falling out over anything or a disagreement or one was upset and the other one didn't really want to know, um, one would pick up the cushion and that meant that we needed to talk. And when we went into that talk, we would, whoever was holding the cushion would talk and say exactly what they thought. Then you pass the cushion to the other person and the other person had to repeat what you'd said. And while you were talking, there's no loud, no interruptions, which I used to find really, really hard, to be honest. But my husband was very good at it. Um, and then he would repeat to me what I'd said so, so that I understood that he understood. And then from that point, you could start unwinding it and, and getting through it. And we found it, we didn't have that many disagreements, but if ever we did, that was the way we, we got out of it. Wow. It's very easy to just keep going at one another all the time. So one of you has got to stop while the other one talks. And we found the cushion was a really good way of doing it. Love that. That's amazing. So much active listening. And you realize when you have to repeat it, how little we actually listen because exactly. so much just goes over our head. Exactly. <laughs> so the, words, the words that are often helpful, as you say, something like I hear you say, and then you repeat back the words you heard. And then at the end of it, you ask something like, am I with you? So instead of saying, am I right or wrong? You're just asking, am I with you in whatever you're describing? And then the other says, yes. Yeah, that's brilliant. And like Sarah was saying, what's I think really important is the person that's asked for time um, to cool down um, or the person that says, you know, this is going nowhere needs to be the person that re-engages because you've, you've been the one that's kind of pulled away. And so the partner that does that needs to then re-engage. So in order to keep our little house together, I used some sellotape. You might have used some glue. If you were really good, you might have had to use nothing. But the reality is our homes mostly need some kind of nuts and bolts. And nuts and bolts obviously are something that are di they're different pieces that together hold um, parts. You know, you kind of stack parts together and they hold them tightly. And that's a lot like what a relationship is. We are two different people, but together when we, that is when we're most useful. And that's when we are kind of being um, fulfilling our purpose or serving in our best way even though we come with differences. And I think the differences in relationships are often seen as something negative. A lot of my clients who come and see me feel very distressed by their differences. And I'm just so grateful that Drew and I are so different because I don't need another one of me in our marriage and I don't need another one. He doesn't need another one of him. The fact that we're different is what makes it work. And sometimes we need to look at these differences with a different perspective and say, how does your difference serve me or help me to grow? You know? um, and so I think it will be really nice for you to take some time to think about the ways in which you and your partner are different, but actually why that makes your relationship wonderful rather than why it's something negative. I've always had this feeling that diversity is actually what builds that resilience in your relationship. And we choose our partners not by coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. God is not a God of coincidences or mistakes or accidents. You choose a partner because they have something in them that heals something in you. And so often that negative in them is something that's really going to grow and be beautiful for you. So that's why I do want you to think about those differences and really honor the way that God made them different to the way that he made you. So our last part of our little house is the roof. And this is what protects the external elements. Sometimes in our house, you'll find that there'll be some leaks. There might be some need for repairs or for some maintenance. And that's a really important thing about conflict is that it's not about conflict resolution as much as it is conflict management, because there will always be something to argue about or fight about or discuss in a relationship. But if you can think about it as a way to repair the leaks, that's a really helpful way. 
or sometimes there are leaks that don't always get repaired. But how can the sun kind of shine through those anyway? So what I'd like you to do is in the same way as from the rooftop, we gain different perspective. We can see things up there that we could never see if we were on the ground. It gives us that bird's eye view, the big picture. So what I'd like you to do is to take a moment just to either write down the reflection questions or to reflect on it now. What is it that you learned about your relationship today or just learned in general? The second thing is what have you relearned? So what was it something that you knew, but it was just really nice to be reminded about? What surprised you today in any way? Something unexpected that you learned or heard or felt even? And lastly, what are you grateful for today? I really want to thank you for engaging today and for joining and being present um, and just showing up both physically and in your sharing and in your writing. I could see you're really engaging with it. So I, I appreciate that. And if you'd like to share any of your reflections with me or you would like to get in touch with me afterwards to share them, I'd love to hear. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm here as well to answer. Thank you. Anyone got any questions or anything you want to say? Just thank you. Yeah, it's been really good. Yes. Hasn't it? Thanks. Yeah, I'd like, I really. I'd like, like, oh, sorry. Go on, Karen. No, I just wanted to say a big thank you as well, Simon, because it's thank you know, it, it's easy to sort of just breeze over some of this these things, and you know, when you're in the middle of it, you just kind of stumble along. So to take a step back and, a, um, as you say, kind of get that different perspective from the rooftop, that for me is, that's a, a, a good thing to do once in a while. And I haven't done it for a while. So thank you for that. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to both you and Jane. I really appreciate it. Simone, I was just, I'm blown away by how lovely this workshop was and how much work you've put into making sure that you've covered all the different ideas that will help us to strengthen our relationships. Mm. And I've certainly got some things to take away. Um, I really liked the idea of the one to five things that I would love to give my part, my husband a high five for. Um, I'm very much liked that the 30 minutes, five times a week, that was really good. And I'll certainly come up with that list. I haven't, done any of the list because I've been trying to manage the the meeting and take the notes as well so I've got notes about everything so that I can make sure that I do do the things um, so I hope that everybody else has, has found it just as useful and one of the things that I was aware of the whole time was that actually it didn't just have to be about a relationship with your romantic partner but there was there was a lot to be learned about relationships with other people as well, about spending time with other people and about connecting with other people and how to soothe yourself when you fall out and what to do about reconnecting. If you're the one who, who, who disconnected, you're the one who needs to reconnect. And I think that that is such an important thing. So Simone, you're just wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so I just Thank want to you. say to everybody that um, Simone is, is a member of our community. Um, so if you want to find her, you can just go into the search bar and put Simone, and that's like Simone, it's like Simon with an E on the end, Poppleton. <laughs> and you'll find her and you can contact her and talk to her and if you want any um, support from her then uh, you can speak to her about it there as well and in the meantime thank you all for your time and I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next week if not before okay thank you everyone thank you bye, bye. Thank you. bye. Thank you, Simone. bye.